All right, so I want to go through the method of keeping proportions accurate that we went through in our first lesson today, the grid method, some people call it. Um, to do this, you either need your T-square or you're going to need a triangle. Now, mine is opaque, but yours ideally is transparent so that you can see more of what you're doing. Um, for what we're doing here, essentially, we've got a drawing. It's already got a grid on it. And we want to be able to copy this drawing to practice our ability to see proportions and relationships. In order to see those things more accurately, we look at those lines in the drawing as they relate to this grid that we've overlaid here. Now, this one already came with a grid printed on it. Uh, so your job at this point is to make your own grid that corresponds to this grid. So the first thing you would do is just pay attention to how many boxes there are in this grid. For this, you've got four boxes on the side, five boxes on top. Great, so it's a four by five grid, no problem. So we'll take this, set it aside, get one of our pieces of paper, and we're going to tape it to our artboard. It doesn't really matter that it's taped at a, an appropriate angle, because your grid will be square with the sides of the board, even if the paper is not square with the sides of the board. That's okay. So I put just two pieces of tape down there to keep it square. First thing I'll show you to do is with the T-square itself. So if you've got the T-square, make sure that this T part, the cap of the T-square, is lined up against the edge of this board. That way when you slide it, you know that three inches in is always going to be the same as three inches in. If you have it up on the board like this, then you can move it and slide it and it could go anywhere and it's not as accurate. So what you want to do is keep it against the edge of the board and then just to begin, uh, draw along the edge of the ruler. Um, start from somewhere that's easy to identify. So three inches is where I'm starting. I'm going to just draw it across. Now, I've gotten to about 14 inches here. So I know that I've got 11 inches to play with, 12 inches if I want to go all the way back to 2 and do that. But I'll just go from 3 to 14. That's 11 inches. If I have to have 5 squares on the top side of my drawing, then the biggest I can make those squares is 2 inches, because 2 times 5 is 10. So with 10 inches of room here, I'm going to say every 2 inches, I'm going to make a little notch. So 3 inches, 5 inches, 7, 9, 11, and finally 13. That's going to be the top side of my grid. Now I want to go a little further down, doesn't really matter where, and I'm not going to draw another line across, I'm just going to put dots at those same spots. So 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. I'm not even sure if you can see those dots, they're pretty small. So that's just telling me, uh, it's giving me another reference to make sure that these lines actually do line up when I change this around. Now the next thing I need to do is put the T-square on the top. So now we're doing the, the vertical columns here. So all I need to do is line it up on the side where I've got my first side line here. Now this is nice because it actually lines up exactly on 5 inches. So I know that the 5 inch mark is where I'm going to start. Now these boxes are 2 inches by 2 inches. So every 2 inches I'm going to make another little mark to remind me of where my lines are going to go horizontal need to start. So I'm just going to draw the whole thing down. And then I start, well, there's 5 inches, 2 more inches makes 7, 9, 11, oops, and 13. Okay, I know I only have 4 boxes, so that's all I need right there. Now that I've done that, I can scoot over a little bit more, just like I did with my first set of lines, and do the same thing, just at 7, I make a little mark, at 9, I make a little mark, 11, and 13. So those are going to help me make sure that I don't get off from square. And now that I've got this T-square up at the top, I'm going to continue by just continuing these lines. And I see that it lines up here with that so that I know that I'm doing it right. And I'm going to scoot it over here. I see that it lines up with this one and the top line, so I know it's still correct. And this one I run into trouble, because you can see the end of my ruler is actually butting up against this clip, and so it's not letting me get square on the top here. That's okay. That's one of the reasons that I made these, this extra line. So I've got the top line here, and I've got this line there. I just make sure my ruler is right up against those two, and I can bring that straight down and know that I've still got a very straight line parallel to the other lines I've got over here. Do the same thing for the last two. And then bring it over to do our horizontal lines. Those go exactly the same way, just making sure that you've got all these lined up as you go across. And you can see I actually missed a little bit. Mine's a little bit low. And for this, that won't matter too much because you guys know how to fix that. 
and then last one right here. Great. And so now what I end up with is I have my five boxes on top and I have my four boxes on the side and it's identical in proportion to this drawing. At this point in the grid method, what you'd want to do is zoom in real close to just one of those squares. So the top left square, I would draw that one first. Ignore the fact that it's part of a tree, ignore the fact that it's a landscape. Just look at the shapes and how they line up. So this line intersects the grid barely over from that actual vertical line. This one does not quite touch the bottom of the square, but it comes over and kind of makes this backward L shape with the tree. So I'm going to try to do that same thing in this box. I start over here. I know that there's a little bit of an intersection there. It's a little bit of a rounded part, and it comes down really low. And at about the halfway point is when it gets really skinny again. So that's where I'll bring this. This one intersects right there. And I know there's a couple more bumps. And I would keep drawing this just the best that I can, looking back and forth, referencing the photo or the, the image here and my drawing, making sure that the space that I'm trying to fill matches the space that's being filled compared to the lines on this grid. Now again, I'm not paying attention to the fact that this is a tree. I don't care what this is yet. I just want to make this square look the best I can. So that's about as good as I want to make it right now. At this point, I would move on to the next square. So this one interacts right there, more or less. And I know that it fills up most of this area. I don't know exactly where it is, so I'll put this really general light shape in for right now. I'm not even sure if you can see it on the film. And it might intersect about here. And it has this little funny shape where it intersects. And I just try to draw exactly what I'm seeing in this square. Not the overall shape of the tree, just the square. And see, when I get to this point, I see that there's a little line that actually connects those two. So I'll do that. It's not very big. Looks about like that, I guess. And you would continue this process all the way through the, the drawing. That's the grid transfer method. And it's, it's very simple. It'll help you with your portions. Uh, one of the things to, to keep in mind and to watch out for as you're doing this is to not only look at the positive shapes, which are, for instance, the shape that actually is the tree, but also the negative shapes. And negative shapes are everything that is not what you're actually drawing. In this example, I've shaded the negative space right there to show you that funny looking shape that doesn't mean anything is just as important as the actual tree. Because when I'm trying to make that shape, if I make it right, I pay attention to those proportions well enough, it'll make my tree look a lot better. See, just looking at it right now, I can tell that I haven't made this part big enough. I've kept it really small. So I'm going to come back in and erase that part of my drawing. And I'm going to try to make that a little more like the shape that I see, which means it's got to be bigger here. There we go. Now, again, it's not perfect, but this shape now matches this shape a little bit more. So that's working with your negative space. Now, last thing I want to mention, this drawing already had a grid on it. And that's great. That makes it very useful. But most of the things that you want to draw and practice with will not already have a grid. For that purpose, I want to show you really quick how to make a grid on a drawing that doesn't already have one so that you can then make your own grid and copy it over. Now, this can be done on a photo as well. If you're actually trying to draw a photo of someone, uh, then doing a grid on top of their photo can help you really get the shapes and the proportions a lot closer than you would necessarily be able to do if you were just drawing it freehand. Now again, freehand, grid method, don't think of any of this as cheating. It's all just practice. Uh, everything that you do when you're drawing is just practice. So uh, I showed you how to do it with a T-square, and we could do that same thing, but I want to do this one with a, with a triangle to show you kind of how that was going to work. So what I'll do is I'll find part of this drawing that I think has a really good edge to it. And, and I think this this bottom and side kind of have a really close relationship. So if I was going to draw a corner on this, I might draw it right down here. 
and then and frame it up that way so that I can get my grid as as close as possible to what I need I'm gonna start by framing it that way now if you've got a see-through triangle that makes it a lot easier because then you'll know exactly where your drawing starts and stops what I'm gonna do is push my triangle up so I can barely see the lines that make the foot now I can see these right here and here I don't think that you can it's, I have to lean over to see them and I'm gonna do the same thing pushing it over a little bit more until I can see the side of this little ash can or, or um, spit bucket whatever this is this, little, this pot and I'm gonna make that the very side the side and the bottom of my image because then it's easier to use those lines as reference when I'm making my drawing later on all I have to do is make sure that my lines connect with the outside of the grid as opposed to overlapping in some special way so all I'm gonna do right now is start those lines and for the bottom because this is where I have my ruler I'm gonna mark every let's say every inch and that's just a choice it could be two inches it could be an inch and a half if you want but it's easier for me to do an inch I'll go all the way out to seven because I know his hand goes out way over here so I've got the end here one two three four five six seven so seven boxes now to make my lines my reference point lines like I did before I'm gonna move the triangle up some more and I'm just gonna make sure that my triangle is is flush with the line on this side and it is and I want to hold it firm again and put those little dots every inch just like I did before on the other piece of paper now I'm gonna flip my triangle because I want the long side one with the measuring unit on there to be the one that I hold against uh, the new edge that I'm gonna make now I've got my seven inches mark already done I'm gonna hold the triangle up to that seven inches mark and make sure that it's flush with the seven inches but also that the base is flush with the base of this grid those both look good so I'm gonna draw my image or my grid lines up here now his head seems to reach about up to the seven inch mark on this one as well so it looks like I have a seven by seven grid every inch just like before I'm gonna go down and mark I'll scoot it over just a little bit make sure that the base is lined up perfectly with the base here so that you don't have any any mismatched lines every inch I'll make another mark and now I'm going to turn it again at this point I'm going to try to make the top of this grid now because it's a triangle and it's perfectly right angles I know that wherever I start this it's going to be 90 degrees and it'll go right across to where this sideline needs to intersect so I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side that I did on the other side and I've got seven inches to mark two three four five six seven I'm gonna do it again and you can see it's good that I have this uh, t-square helping me line up the sides because this line doesn't actually reach all the way where I need it to go so this t-square can actually be a little bit easier in some ways uh, sorry this triangle can be easier in some ways than using the t-square so I've got this lined up with the base it's flat against the, the, the base and it's also flat against the side of this grid so I'll continue I'll just draw that line and I'll make my marks one two three four five six seven perfect so at this point I've got marks on all the sides of my grid and an extra set over here so that I know whatever happens as I line these up they will be perfect squares right and there you have your gridded drawing at this point you would transfer the same method to a clean sheet of paper so that you'd have a seven by it looks like seven by eight grid I hope that helps